Hey all, Brie from the No Guilt Mom podcast, and I have got a gift for you this holiday season. If you love the No Guilt Mom podcast, and I mean love the No Guilt Mom podcast, then tell us about it. Leave us a review and you can be entered to win a No Guilt Mom gift card. All you have to do is leave a review, take a screenshot, and then simply go to noguiltmom.com forward slash review to enter our giveaway for a free No Guilt Mom gift card. Simply for telling us what you think about the podcast. It is amazing. But don't delay. Get right on this as we're going to be giving away that No Guilt Mom gift card on December 21st. So get right on over and visit noguiltmom.com forward slash review. You're listening to episode 67 of the No Guilt Mom podcast. And if you have ever felt like you have way too much to do in your home and you need a way to get your partner on board to contribute a little more equitably, this is the episode for you. We have three ways to start talking to your spouse about taking on more in the house. So now on with the show. You want mom life to be easier. That's our goal too. Our mission is to raise more self-sufficient and independent kids, and we're going to have fun doing it. We're going to help you delegate and step back. Each episode, we'll tackle strategies for positive discipline, making our kids more responsible and making our lives better in the process. Welcome to the No Guilt Mom Podcast. Welcome to the No Guilt Mom Podcast. I am your host, Joanne Crone, joined here by my fantastically wonderful, wonderful co-host, Brie Tucker. <laughs> hello, hello, everybody. How are you? I went into like a little wicked. It's <laughs> wonderful. Have you heard that song? Uh, wonderful. They call me wonderful. Yes. They, it's the worst. It's, the, uh, <laughs> it's like... <laughs> No, any Wicked fan will tell you. Well, actually, maybe I'll get a little bit of like pushback here, but like the wizard character in Wicked is totally undeveloped and not the best thing about the show at all. Um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, probably not. Like that wasn't something that I overly remember. I I saw Wicked like a year and a half ago. Yeah. Like I just remember it was pre-pandemic. Okay. <laughs> At this point. I'm a huge, huge Wicked fan. Like we went to go see Adina in Wicked in London in like 2005. Oh my which, God, I'm so jealous it, right now. It went back way, way far, the, this whole Wicked love. So uh-huh. oh, <laughs> Wicked Lord. love. Okay. And it's funny you say that because as soon as you started saying wonderful, yeah. I went back to my, you know, because I was in the show choir back when oh, I was in high school. Like Glee? Like Glee. Oh my gosh, we didn't have one of and, those. I'm and jealous. And so you brought me back to, it's wonderful, it's marvelous, da 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 da. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like when I saw Glee, I'm like, these things exist? Because we didn't have that at my high school. So ours wasn't as performance oriented, like glamour show mm-hmm. as Glee was. But yeah. yeah, we had, it was a jazz show choir. So I had, oh, I'll, I'll show it to you one day. Oh, yeah. We I had sequins. <laughs> yeah. There was uh, in my colors of my video. school. Oh, my God. <laughs> And the colors of my school were blue on blue. So I uh-huh. had like royal blue sequins oh. and the red sheer puffy sleeves because it was back in the 90s. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'll share. And oh, you will laugh. That'll be fun. Oh, yes. <laughs> Brie has so many wonderful things back from high school that I'm surprised I survived. <laughs> oh, man. Good times. I don't have anything nearly as embarrassing from high school. I'm like trying to think. But you in high school, I just wore a lot of jeans and sweatshirts and there were no like fantastic costumes. And I was in theater too. I do have me in a toga for one Greek like play I did. But I was Elizabeth Proctor too in The Crucible. But that was pretty like buttoned up and 1800s. Okay, okay I'm going to throw this out there. For those who really want to know the Brie Vault. Yeah. I was in marching band. Oh, nice. I was in flag corps. <laughs> and I was in show choir and pep band. Oh, wow. I, I, so I have, I have lots of embarrassing pictures from high school. Like, oh. And people, and I love my friends for those that are listening. But man, y'all got to stop posting that stuff on social media. I have worked hard to not have those pictures of me in a band uniform pop up. And yet they keep coming up. I've never seen them. You must do a good job of like not I, allowing I, them on your timeline. I don't. I have to approve all <laughs> pictures. But if you dig deep enough, occasionally I will let one pop up there. I, I 
we'll have to bring we'll have to have a day where we come in and like share our our high school pictures i look the same like same hair same everything i really have not changed oh no i had the whole like dark brick colored lipstick like black eyebrows like really dark hair and it was super short like really oh wow that is a big change oh yeah i have changed a lot that's funny (laughs) no i need to see these pictures no i need to see them Oh, it's a good thing that that you're a bestie that I know that I'll survive this. You will survive. You will survive. survive. But you know, we change a lot. That's the point of this. Like we go through a lot of changes in our lives. We do. And internal changes more. Like I would say emotionally, like inside, I'm much different than I was in high school. Like I'm much more confident now. I'm much more aware of like my own abilities. That has changed. But physically, I don't think I, I mean, I'll show you pictures. I don't think I've changed that much. Oh, I've seen pictures of when you and Josh first started dating oh, yeah. in college and yeah you just you look the, the same we're the sparkly vampires we always get <laughs> I don't understand it like, we're like I don't... the non-aging like and then th- that cracks me up because then yet like I'll pull out my wedding album from my past marriage and my kids will be like mom why does dad look the same and you look so much older and I'm oh. like because mom was married to dad <laughs> It aged mommy. (laughs) That kind of brings us to the topic of today's episode. It does. Uh, (laughs) So I was I was like perusing Facebook and I found this one post in a parenting group. And a mom asked other moms like something that they do that makes their lives easier. And the example she gave was making her husband's lunch the night before so that he wouldn't wake her up in the morning. And I looked at this and I'm like, what is this? And I screenshotted it and I texted it to Bree. And I'm like, Bree, does this happen? And Bree says, uh, yes. 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 That was my life for like 15 years. That's so yes. like crazy to me that that's like it happens. <sighs> you and know, I, I mean, I, yeah. I don't maybe it's not crazy to me because I do hear it a lot from people. So I wouldn't say that. I would just say like that it's something that you look at and it's it's a common thing. Of course, I would make my husband's lunch the night before so he wouldn't wake me up instead of being like, what is he doing waking me up to make his lunch? Like, can't he make his own lunch? That is a very good point, right? And you brought it up to your husband and he was like, there is something wrong if you're a grown adult and you don't know how to make your own lunch. Yeah, and I and I did scroll through the comments and there were a lot of people who are like, yeah, next time he tries that, just slap him. When he- <laughs> I know. And I think, I think it brings up a really good point about expectations mm-hmm. and relationships and communication styles for sure. Yes. So to kind of like give like a little bit of background on my story. So in my first marriage, it was just kind of, I had this thought in my head and I don't know, I think it kind of came from like my my parents because we all mm-hmm. kind of get something from our, our parents' relationship. And in my parents' relationship, they would do things for each other. Mm-hmm. And it would be like, it, it just, again, it, it would be like, okay, my dad would go and fill my mom's car with gas. Yeah. And he would like bring her, like she loved Diet Coke and he'd bring her like her favorite diet cherry coke Mm -hmm. to work like occasionally if he got off early like that was like that his thing that he would do nice things for her and the same for my mom she would do kind things for my dad so I guess I just kind of assumed that that was how you did things so when I was in my relationship like my ex was like you know it's important to me that you get up in the morning and you make my coffee fresh and you make my lunch fresh for me that's important to me so So you you thought it was like Something that, you know, he was just requesting something nice to do that would make him feel important. Right. And so like when I first started doing it Mm -hmm. before we were married, but we were living together, I was like, yeah, sure. No problem. This is a way that I'm going to show you that I care for you. And you're going to do the same thing back. Yeah, he never did. He never did it. No, he didn't do it back. We would have conversations about it. And I think it kind of comes. But you know what? The conversations were limited. Yeah. Because again, it wasn't a relationship where we I didn't have a voice. And I didn't stand up for myself in that voice. It wasn't very much of a of a give and take kind of relationship. Mm-hmm. And and I think it's important to go through these things because you learn. Yeah. And now I know different. Yeah. And I'm and I'm much more assertive for myself. And I'm very open on communication. And I think that's been a, a cornerstone of my current relationship that I'm in. Of like that you talk about things and and you have these conversations. And it was just one of those things where I I kept thinking that if I just kept doing something enough that this person would just pick up on it and start doing it. I think that's totally common. It is. And so I think that's that's a good point. Like a lot of us feel like if we just keep sacrificing, if we just keep modeling, Mm -hmm. the other person is going to do it. Yeah. 
My son is playing a game right now on his computer where he's a thief and the cops are after him. So I'm so excited about this new app, Give As We Grow, where instead of being the quote unquote bad guys, kids are practicing giving back. That is so cool, Joanne. I really wish that there was something like this when my kids were younger that got them excited about giving back to others and helped them build a better understanding of what it really means to volunteer. Give As We Grow is the first of its kind free educational mobile app for children ages 8 to 11 that teaches kids via fun, service-focused mini game quests to tap into their unique talents and interests to help others. And did you know that studies show that there is a biological connection between generosity and happiness and that volunteering improves people's physical and mental health? I mean, kids who volunteer typically do better in school and are less likely to engage in risky behaviors. And that is something that I think we all want for our kids. Ready to spark a new movement in generosity? Find and download Give As We Grow for free in the App Store for Android and iOS. And for resources for the whole family, visit giveaswegrow.org. This message is sponsored by Greenlight. It is so hard to raise kids who know how to manage money. Brie, right now, my kids are all about earning money for presents. My daughter wants to get presents for all of her friends, and my son is doing a secret Santa with his friends. Oh, I hear you. And if you're looking to raise kids that are financially responsible, we have got a lifesaver recommendation for you that you need to check out. It is Greenlight. Greenlight is a debit card and money app made for families that gives kids and teens an easy and fun way to gain financial literacy all while giving parents peace of mind. You can send instant money transfers, automate allowance, and even keep an eye on kids' spending with real-time notifications. Meanwhile, your kids can begin their journey towards financial autonomy by learning how to save, invest, and spend wisely. So sign up for Greenlight today and get your first month free when you go to greenlight.com slash NGM. That's greenlight.com slash NGM to try Greenlight for free. Greenlight.com slash NGM. Yeah. And like it's that expectation too. So like the way my parents interacted was I did I saw my mom do everything. I saw her do everything. Like she worked a full time job and then she came home and she made dinner and she took care of the kids. And like my dad, my dad's great. It's not like he was mean about it or anything like that. And he's always like, Oh, thank you and thank you and thank you. Yeah, he was he was thankful for it. He was thankful for it, but my mom's like why don't you help me? Why do I always have to tell you what to do? And he's like, I just don't know what to do. Like, tell me what to do and I'll do it. So I always saw that growing up and it never quite got resolved. And like, I could tell how tired my mom was. I Mm -hmm. could tell how, how it affected her that like no one was stepping up to help her. And I saw that as a kid, but As a kid, I wasn't quite emotionally aware enough of like, oh, I should help my mom or like, I just, I saw it as the way things were. Well, because also she never point blank said, come and help me out, right? Yeah. Or maybe she said it and I pushed back. Oh, maybe as a kid. And then it wasn't said again. Right. Because that is hurtful. Like you're being vulnerable as you're a parent. Being, yeah. And then your kids are like, I don't want to. I mean, oh, I did it. I, I totally know I did it. My yeah. my parents tried to get me to wash the dishes. And every time I'd be like, I don't want to wash the dishes. And then I would do like the worst job ever of washing the dishes. And so, of course, the conclusion they came to was it's much easier to do this ourselves. And then let me also just kind of ask you this, because mm-hmm. I'm hearing you say these things and it's bringing up emotions with me. Yeah. So as a kid when you were pushing back and doing a crappy job because let's be honest we all did it yeah I did it too I Mm -hmm. had chores I had to do that I did a crappy job hoping my parents would stop asking me but in my case they normally would just be like (laughs) yeah do it again yeah didn't work that well for me but anyways my point being is I wasn't saying I didn't like my parents or I didn't love them Mm -hmm. I just didn't want to do the chore I just didn't want to do the dishes yeah but now in my role as a parent if my kid does a crappy job or fights me on something and I ask them to do it, and they're like, oh, I just don't want to. For some reason, in my head, there's that little voice that's that just, it's back there. It's not, you know, the forefront, but it's back there. And it's like, oh, my kids don't love me because they won't help me, and they're not doing what I ask. And it's not true. Right? And I know I, it's not true, and but I, yet you hear it. I do know that talking to my mom now, that is the internal dialogue that was going on in her head. Oh. Because she brought up to me just this past weekend, she's like, oh, well, because we had this thing where I wanted to cook in the kitchen. I found this like kids cookbook and I went to my dad and I'm like dad like I want to cook this and I think my mom was at work at the time and he told me he's like no it's your mother's kitchen you can't go in there I remember you telling me that and um (laughs) 
so I didn't get to cook as much as I want to. And my mom heard this and she's like, now I know the reason that you didn't help me and my daughters didn't help me is because dad was saying these things. And I'm like, well, and he wasn't doing it to be mean. Yeah, he, he genuinely thought he was respecting your mom's boundaries. He did. <laughs> he did. It was a whole miscommunication. And it was something that could have been avoided just by knowing that there's these different communication styles and knowing that, you know, just because somebody doesn't do it the first time, it doesn't mean they don't love you or they don't respect you. But it means like some kind of communication line was crossed there. Right. And I think if we view it in terms of communication, that we can really work through these problems and feel much less overwhelmed and feel much more supported by our families. Not in every situation. I'm not saying in every situation, but as the first line of kind of like inquiry and like trying to solve this problem, I think it's a good one to go for, for the communication. I 100% agree with that because again, as I have found my voice more over the past, and my journey is probably, my my journey is still kind of new. I've only been going through this whole like trying to communicate more and be more assertive and, and be more clear in my expectations and what my needs are has been like maybe the past five years. Yeah. So it's only been about five years that I've been doing this, but I have found that I feel so much better and that even when I have these communications with my kids, that they are hearing me Mm -hmm. and that I see them being more clear in their communication, which makes my heart happy. Because the last thing I want is for my kids to go through this The shame that I feel like I went through for so many years of feeling like I wasn't heard, I wasn't appreciated, I wasn't respected. Mm -hmm. I was just kind of like a shell, just kind of dealing with things because I kept waiting for the next thing to happen without speaking up for myself. So, I mean, I I can't say that any of this was anyone else's fault but mine. I mean, it, it was a combination, yes. But I had a big part in it because I wasn't speaking up for what I needed. Mm -hmm. And had I had these skills at an earlier time, I think it would have made a huge difference. And nobody teaches these skills. I know, right? Like you would think like, oh, we can go into like relationships and just like know what to do because we saw what our parents do. But that's the thing. Like we saw what our parents do. And we were never taught like this, like how to share our feelings in a way without blame and how to listen to others to find like the exact reasons behind their actions instead of like making assumptions. Right. I I learned how to bring you a Diet Coke. To show you that I love you. Uh, (laughs) I love my mom and dad so much. And again, like that's what I learned is that, okay, you show love through doing acts. And that's not how everybody works, right? And that's why these skills are so important to talk. So important. And, you know, we did this No Goat Mom survey a few months ago. And the thing that kept coming up over and over again was how overwhelmed moms feel. And like, oh, I I hear it. And just right, we wrote everything down on these little post-its in our office and they're up on the mirror right now. But it's just over and over again, I feel so overwhelmed. I wish my family would help out more. I don't feel appreciated. Yeah, Yeah, uh, not expected to do everything myself. I wish my kids would get up and do more around the house. Why are they uh, expecting me to do everything? Why aren't they working and helping? I feel like I'm feeling my child and my family. Oh, see, and that breaks my heart because I know that feeling. I know that feeling of like hopelessness of like, how did I get here? Mm-hmm. You like sometimes you're just we're so busy in the day to day stuff that we're doing in every role that we have, but especially as moms, we're busy in, in making sure that our kids have everything that they need, that they're getting what they need for school, that they're getting whatever extracurriculars that they need, especially in this case, also what's going on in our current climate, making sure that they're getting their social interactions. Mm -hmm. We're trying to make sure that their mental health needs are being met. We're also trying to make sure that our spouse is doing okay and that our family is doing okay. And then you like kind of look up and you're like standing there by yourself, haven't showered in like three days. We have too much on our plates. Right, right. There's too much. And you're just like, how did this happen? So there has to be a way to offload. And like, we hear you guys. And that, like, we have something really exciting coming next week. Next week it comes out. And if you've been following us on email, like, you know about it. It's called Calm and Happy Parenting. It's the first course that No Guilt Mom has created for parents. And I... I'm like, like I'm beaming ear to ear about this because I think it's going to make a difference in so many women's lives. Like it, this process has already made a difference in our members in balance, our coaching program for moms. And I cannot, cannot wait to share it with you. Uh, So make sure 
you keep a lookout next week. It's April 19th. It starts and it's only available for five days. So just keep a lookout. But right now in this episode, let's talk about what you can do if you're feeling overwhelmed, if you feel like you are taking on all this stuff and how you can start communicating with your partner about how to relieve some of those duties from you. Okay. So the first thing is to be very vulnerable about your feelings in a situation. So I've been married now, gosh, it's 15 years. <laughs> I know you guys have your anniversary. We have anniversary very soon, 15 years. And we've we've had to work through a lot of communication stuff through those 15 years because I was told as a kid, like, oh, if people love you, they just know how to make you happy and know what to do. Right. I don't think that's too, like, that's a pretty common thing thought there Uh, right I think a lot of us like think that you just you should just know what I'm thinking yeah and like giving you the eye don't you get it or you know what this don't you know what this look means yeah don't you (laughs) don't you see how unhappy I am and why aren't you doing this like I've felt those things I definitely felt those things and the thing that helped is just looking at one thing at a time so for instance the first thing the first thing I started with was and it's funny it goes back to the dishes. Okay. <laughs> Me and the dishes, oh, we have a very hate-hate relationship. I think many of us, <laughs> when it comes to dishes or laundry, I mean, give me a heck yeah out there in podcast land. Yeah. How many of you all, like, one of your pain points is some kind of a chore or housework? Yeah. And like this one goes all the way back to my childhood with the dishes. I don't know. It triggers me. (laughs) It just does. So I was here. I was making all the meals and then I was feeling like I had to clean up after all the meals. And so the first thing that I did was I'm like, you know, I feel like I'm I'm making these meals and then I feel like it's my responsibility to clean up after the meals. Oh, yeah. Been there. Been and there. like I feel hurt. I feel like I'm expected to do everything and it makes me feel like unrespected, you know, and I would just laid it all out there. And it's so hard when you're sharing your feelings like that because I can't say it in a way like you're disrespecting me or you feel I'm not worth it. Like those are blame. Right. And when you get blamed, you tend to like not listen as much. Right. I mean, I know I do. You get defensive because you have to defend yourself. Because you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's not what I meant. Yeah. But 90% of the time when someone's saying like you, da, 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 90% of the time that person actually is wrong. They're not really getting your motivation. And so you tend to be defensive. Mm -hmm. So, but if you say your own feelings, if it's like, I feel unappreciated when I see the dishes piling up on the counter and no one steps in to wash them or take care of them. And so that just started the discussion. And it wasn't a very neat discussion. Like it was a kind of a back and forth about what we both expected. We came to the agreement that whoever cooks dinner, the other one cleans up. I think that sounds really fair. Yes, it's totally fair. It was totally fair. And uh, it's so funny, though, because I hate dishes so much. I am the first one to jump in and I'm like, oh, my dinner. (laughs) I'll do it. I will cook so fast every night. I will cook, yeah. Hey, all. Brie here. And I wanted to share one of my favorite gifts to give during the holiday season, a StoryWorth book. It is the most amazing gift ever. StoryWorth is an online service that lets you create a special and unique gift of someone's story. I've given StoryWorth books to both of my parents, and it has been their favorite gift hands down. And did I mention it is so easy? StoryWorth emailed my parents questions every week that I handpicked from their massive list of questions that they have. All my parents had to do was open their email and answer them. That easy. I asked my dad questions like, did you have any rules that you set for yourself as a parent, which you immediately broke? And he did. I even asked both of my parents, are you more like your mom or your dad? And they shared a lot of really amazing qualities that I didn't know about my grandparents at the time. Then at the end of the year, StoryWorth compiles all of their answers, puts them into this gorgeous book that covers everything. My parents love showing us their books and I personally love getting a chance to read them. With StoryWorth, I am giving those I love, a thoughtful and personal gift from the heart that preserves their memories and stories for years to come. Go to storyworth.com slash NGM and save $10 on your first purchase. That's storyworth.com slash NGM to save $10 on your first purchase. We're hitting that time of year where my brain gets so overloaded in December that I look for 
anything to make life easier. And I have to say, Brie, that Green Chef is one of those services. Yes. Green Chef is there to take away the dreaded, oh my goodness, what are we going to eat for dinner tonight? You can eat clean all holiday long with over 80 weekly meal options each week featuring things like quick and easy, protein packed, calorie smart, or my personal favorite, the keto options. And you don't have to lose track of healthy eating habits during the holidays because every Green Chef customer gets a free session with one of their registered dietitians who can walk you through how to make clean eating work for you, which is very cool. And I have to say that I have been loving their recipes lately. They put things together I have never thought of. This week, we're trying the lemon basil caper pork with sauteed cauliflower, bell peppers, almonds, and feta cheese, my favorite. Their recipes make it so easy to support my wellness goals without skipping on flavor. For Green Chef's best deal of the year, get $250 off with code NGM250 at greenchef.com slash NGM250. That's greenchef.com slash NGM250. And don't forget to use that code NGM250 to get $250 off. Green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well. So um, the first part is, you know, making sure like you you are vulnerable. That's a hard word. You are vulnerable (laughs) with your feelings and not sharing the blame. And you're coming to a mutually agreeable solution. Right. I think the vulnerable is is that key there. A lot of us, like no matter how long we've been in a relationship with somebody, and that relationship also includes our kids, mm-hmm. it's scary to put yourself out there because that answer that could be coming back is a, I don't care. Yeah. And ouch, man, if that is not the sharpest knife into a mom's heart, mm-hmm. is like your kid saying, I don't care or so what, which is... Uh, let's just be honest. Again, a- as a parent of, of teens, that's not an uncommon response to get. No. And no. it doesn't mean that they don't love you. It ju- They just don't get it. They just don't see it as a priority. And the same for your spouse, possibly. I think it's even more like putting yourself in a vulnerable. Vul- see, I can't say that word. Vulnerable. vulnerable. <laughs> if anyone else is messing up that word, no, I'm right there with you. It's harder with your spouse because you're on equal footing with them, too. And I hear a lot of friends say that they try to share this with their spouse and their spouse is like, well, you're home all day and I work. 100%. Like, again, we're not saying that there's a right or a wrong way to do this stuff. But like, yeah, I was also in a relationship where it was just like, hey, I work the harder job. You're home more. You need to be the one that deals with this. Mm -hmm. In the very beginning, conceptually in my head, again, when I say very beginning, I mean like before I was married, before I had kids. Because let me just say this. Who was a perfect parent before they had kids, right? (laughs) You knew everything. Who knew exactly what they wanted to, like, knew exactly what they wanted their life to be like when they were in their, like, early to mid-20s, maybe even late 20s. Like, you're like, hey, I know what I want my life to be like. And then... You get into it and you're like, oh, wait, this is a lot different than I expected it to be. It's so So, different. so again, yes. And in, in my case, because that was one thing that my my spouse would bring up, be like, well, you agreed that you were willing to take on all the house duties and everything and da 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 da. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, yes, I did. But I didn't know I was going to be working full time and raising two kids. It's just it's too much. Yeah. So then you have to be able to be open to having that conversation. And also when you're a stay at home parent, you don't get off time. Like, it's not like your job stops and you get to go home and relax. Everybody thinks that it's like it is on TV. Yeah. And in those funny sitcoms where there are breaks. No, a lot of times there aren't. Like, you're lucky if you get to pee by yourself. Let's Mm -hmm. just be honest, guys. It's true. It's true. Yeah. But it's. It's so hard in those conversations, especially when, uh, and the examples that I have seen, it's always, you know, guys, they come and they're like, yeah, well, this is what it was in my house growing up. Like, why can't you handle it? And it's horrible to think that because first of all, if we really want to get into this, I don't know if we do. I, I don't know if we do. I was sitting I get there with my, my mouth open as yeah. you said that. I was just like, I don't even, I'm speechless on what to say when they say like, well, that's how it was when I was growing up. Don't even. Yeah. Or that even. I work and you get to stay at home. Well, listen, mister, the reason like you work is because men get like higher pay than women. <laughs> And like, that's just a known thing right now. I mean, we're working for the equal pay right now. I'm just laughing because I'm like, oh, don't even get me started on gender inequality. I can't even. (laughs) I can't even. So when husbands, like when I hear my friend's husbands, like they tell me they say stuff like that. I'm like, "Mm, no, like he needs a little reality check there. 
but that's a whole other issue. Uh, (laughs) We're just going (laughs) to, yeah. Yeah, he there, there there's some reality checks that needs to go on right there. Uh, because moms, if you're staying at home and you're the stay at home parent and your partner comes home and expects to relax while you are still cooking dinner and doing laundry and putting the kids to bed and bathing the kids because your job didn't stop. Be- yeah, because your job didn't start. There needs to be a reality adjustment there for uh, for that partner. <laughs> yes. No, I, I 100 percent agree with that, mm-hmm. because I think a lot of times as women, that guilt mm-hmm. gets thrown at us so often. So like, oh, yeah. I, we are no guilt mom. But I mean, like one thing that there needs to be a boundary of is that your family should not be throwing that guilt at you. They, yeah. they should not be like, hey, you would, you know, I worked all day. So you should be able to handle this. That's throwing guilt at you. And that's not OK. No, it's not, not okay. OK at all. So if you're in that situation, know that you do not deserve it. You don't. Yes. And that there are relationships where partners contribute equally. It took two people to make the kids. It should take (laughs) two people to take care of the kids. Um, Exactly. If that person, if they're home, if you have a partner at home, that should be happening. Yes. So, um, Getting off my soapbox now. Uh, (laughs) Let me step down. Let me step down from my soapbox. (laughs) So the last part of uh, this whole process and communication is embracing the messiness of it. Because a lot of times we think we come up with a solution and then, oh, that solution will work out perfectly. And if it doesn't work out perfectly, oh, man, it means that this problem's just unsolvable. Right. Or it's like, okay, I said to you my feelings. I was vulnerable. It should be like a magic wand. And it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way, unfortunately. There's going to be messiness as both people kind of adjust to the new expectations you've both set down. For example, Mm -hmm. like with me and my husband in the dishes, those dishes didn't get done right away. They were sitting on the counter for like days. And this was one of our like disagreements because he's like, I will get to them. I promise I get to them. And I would come down in the morning and be like, the dishes are still there. And I'd feel all of the hurt and anxiety again and again. I brought this up with him and uh, we came to the agreement that I just needed to let it go. I needed to let it go. You needed See, to trust him that he would get it done. Is yeah. What he was saying to you. But he had to say that to you. He had to say it to and me. And you had to hear that. Mm-hmm. And that's an important part of the communication process right there is that you, if you're going to be vulnerable and say what you need to say, you mm-hmm. also need to be listening and open to what your partner says back. Yeah, because it wouldn't have helped the situation if I would have done the dishes when I see th- when I saw them, which I did do at first. I'm like, oh, here it goes again. I'm just going to do all these dishes and like, oh, poor me. And like, I really went through all of these steps and I felt so resentful and so mad until I realized that, you know what? I just need to let it go. I need to let those sit there and he will take care of them like he promised he would. And he did. He did. And we're at the point now, I don't touch those dishes on the counter. Right. I don't touch them at all unless like he cooked and I will wash the dishes and I'll do a very good job of it. And I will not be spiteful or resentful because we've, you know, we have that agreement. Like, because it's it's fair. You guys did it fair. half okay. and half. And, and I am going to say this. So so do give them, like when you're having this conversation and you're trying this for the first time, give some grace to both of you on getting through this process. Mm-hmm. No, that doesn't mean though, because again, coming back to like what we saw posted over the weekend, yeah. I saw another person who posted like, yeah, to that same thread. Yeah, tell me about it. You know, my my husband has said that he would do X, Y, Z every night. Uh-huh. Um, and it's been two weeks. Guess how many times he's done it? Once. Once. My big point is like, don't say you'll do it if you're not actually going to do it. Again, that's another example of where they needed to talk. Like, okay, give him some time. He didn't do it. Then come back and say like, I am feeling hurt yeah. that you said you would do this and you're not doing it. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about why it can't be done. And you know what? Sometimes I feel like when it comes to when we love somebody, sometimes we we just like shoot out what we think they want to hear, yeah. even though we can't actually do it. So like maybe maybe that husband like bit off more than he could chew. He was like, oh, I can get all the chores done at night and then like has to come back and be like, all right, I really wish I could, but I can't. Yeah, which is why it's good to keep the communication open. Yes. So keep having that communication. It's hard. It's hard and it's messy and it's supposed to be that way. We recently finished The Year of Yes by Shonda Rhimes, and she said something in that book. And she's like, you could either tell your feelings or eat your feelings. (laughs) 
Yes. And I'm like, like that is so true. It's so true. Because I was one of those people who ate my feelings instead of like having those hard discussions. I think many of us are. Yes. You know what? Now, though, those hard discussions, I'm like, OK, let's bring it. Right. Because, because yeah, once you get to the point where you've had it. Yeah. It's so much easier. Like, again, like so. It, and then we were just talking about this before this mm-hmm. episode that we're both in two different points in our relationships. And and like right now, like we're both not in like a early 20s relationship, no kids. Like we're we're in the whole like kids, family, house, all those responsibilities kind of thing. But I'm in an early part of my relationship now where we've gotten over the hump of talking mm-hmm. and now like it's so easy. Yeah. It's so easy to have. I know I can say and be vulnerable and the person is not going to throw it back at me. Mm -hmm. I know I can be vulnerable with my partner and I know my partner can be vulnerable with me. And it feels so, so free. Because you've gotten over that hump. Yes. Yeah. So you can offload this work to your partner and to your kids. And we want to help support you in doing it. So Calm and Happy Parenting launches on Monday, April 19th and closes on Friday, April 23rd. And we will take you through the entire communication strategy. We're going to give you examples. We're going to give you prompts. This isn't something where you have like tons of checklists to do and things to keep accountable for and prioritize and like keep on top of. It's not like that. It is just changing your communication style and it is so effective. Uh, So that's Calm and Happy Parenting. Look for it. And the best mom's a happy mom. Take care of you. We'll see you next time. Thanks for stopping by. Are you looking for something to listen to with your whole family? Then check out Six Minutes, produced and created by Gen Z Media. With over 200 twisty, cliffhanger-filled episodes, Six Minutes tells the story of 11-year-old Holiday who was pulled from the icy waters with no memory of who she is or where she came from. Three years ago, Brindley Pasternak helped the Anders family uncover the truth about Holiday's past. Now she'll need them to help her find the truth about hers. In Six Minutes Out of Time, the long-awaited sequel, Cyrus Anders is found unconscious near the mysterious Elixir Academy in Florida, and Brindley learns the school may have a shocking connection to her missing mother. Dive in now and get the most downloaded family audio adventure in history. Follow Six Minutes wherever you get your podcasts. You can listen early and ad-free with the GZM family subscription.